Shall we? Mm -hmm. Wait till everybody gets in focus. Anybody Not mentally, of course. Hope you got one. I was just going to bring mine up. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, number five as well is here for number five. So. Oh. All right, we'll get started with today's meeting. This is the Improvement Services Committee meeting for Wednesday, August 12th. Uh, we are joined by Alderman Joe Moore, Alderman David Nettig, Alderman Jerry Zbiski, as well as Chair Brian Danzier, plus staff Director Steve Grenier, the former roommate of the Count of Monte Cristo. All right, item number one. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on July 15, 2015. Motion approved. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item two, approval of the agenda. Uh, if I may, I'd like to move up item five as the first item. And then item 10 following that. And then I don't think we need him for 11. Do we do? No? Oh, no, no, no. no. We'll, I don't think we need you for 11. And then uh, I think that's it. So uh, we'll re return to the regular order of the agenda after that post with. Motion approve the agenda as amended. Second. All right, we motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item five, request by Alderman Weary to allow overnight on-street parking on weekends except during snow, snow emergencies in residential areas. Uh, the reason I move this up, just so everybody knows, is we do have a uh, gentleman here who was uh, looking to speak on this. Uh, however, I have informed him that I did receive a text message from Mr. Weary who was asking to hold this for two weeks uh, for aldermen and um, neighborhood feedback. Uh, but I did want to at least, again, give you the opportunity if you wanted to speak, sir, or if you wanted to wait until uh, Mr. Weary is here as well. Um, I'll probably wait the two weeks when there's probably going to be more people okay. here to discuss it. Okay, I'm sorry, it might be a month because of our summer rotation. So, do you want to wait till he's here? Or? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll wait this isn't here. a gentleman average six, is it? No, no, no. That he's here about the overnight parking on the weekends. So, okay. not not the one on uh, uh, Nicolet. Got okay. it. Well, I'll make a motion to. Uh, uh, you know what I want to do? I want to make a, a motion actually to refer this to staff um, and to get the opinion of the police department if you could do that, and then uh, we'll bring this topic back up again then at our next meeting. Can, uh, we, can we do that? Uh, how about this? Because I, I did promise Mr. Weary we'd hold this. Can we hold with the recommendation staff to also get input from the police department? To hold the item, which I know this is almost a second communication. Okay, I didn't quite articulate it the way you <laughs> did, but that was my intent. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them to be at the meeting you, or you, to you, get us you an opinion before you, the meeting. You don't, you don't even need to include <laughs> that as part of it. All right, I'm just going to refer the staff. If, if you just table, just table for 30 days. Second right. a motion. A motion and a second to hold with much discussion. <laughs> Mr. Nettig? If I could, uh, when we talk about getting input from the neighborhoods, are we talking from neighborhood associations or what are we talking about? No, apparently there are some individuals that do have some feedback and input on the ability to park overnight on the weekends. I think also Mr. Stoyer has some additional input um, even in the downtown area, which I know is something that is a slightly separate debate but is also inclusive of this as well, okay. which is actually something I mentioned with the uh, uh, the member who's here today, that one of the challenges with this, or not challenges, but one of the topics related to this discussion is, is this going to be a universal thing throughout the entire city, or is this overnight parking on the weekends going to be, again, in the non-parking metered areas, or is this only going to be in the residential areas? So, okay. And even though it specifies residential areas, I know that was one of the topics of what will define that. So. Okay. All right. We have a motion second to hold uh, till the next meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, sir. We will hold that, though, but you've heard our conversation on it, and we'll also be getting some feedback from the police department as well, okay? Thank you. No problem, sir. Thank you for coming. Item number 10, report of the purchasing manager. Item A, request approval to award the purchase of chemical treatment for root control in sanitary sewers from Duke's Root Control for 2015 for an amount not to exceed the 40,000 budgeted item, budgeted for this item. Staff? Uh, every year, the Department of Public Works performs a root treatment program in our sewers. Uh, this program involves uh, placing a chemical in the sewer, which will attack the root system from the inside of the pipe. Uh, the, the roots are problematic because they will 
back materials up, mm -hmm. uh, keep solids collected, and they, they ultimately result in backups within our sewer system. Uh, a few years ago, we did go out and we had some correspondence between our risk management division relative to the different service vendors who provide this service line. And there was some discussion relative to the type of chemical and the exposure to that chemical suffered both by the general public and the workers performing the work. Mm -hmm. And the chemical that's utilized by Dukes is more friendly, it's less toxic, there, there are not <coughs> the environmental liabilities uh, or, or exposure liabilities associated with this chemical. Dukes, I believe, is the only service vendor that we have been able to find who utilizes um, this material. It's, so yeah, it's, a, it's EPA approved. It's an EPA. There, the other, the other material was still being investigated by the EPA. Correct. There, there right. are some, case, some, some significant case studies, uh, especially on the West Coast, relative to the other material that had been proposed by the other service vendor. So in essence, what we are left with is a sole source vendor, and I believe we have brought this forward as a sole source. Yeah, it was approved as a sole source in 2012. You also have a warranty issue with Dukes, uh, because they warrant uh, their application when, if they apply it, if it needs to be reapplied, they do it at no charge. Okay. So we, under item A, what we're looking for is the approval for, to approve our sole source vendor for the 2015 year. And then under item B of this, this, uh, this number, we're looking to pre-approve on a five, basically uh, sure. a five year basis. So we don't have, it, it, right now this is somewhat procedural. And if it is somewhat procedural, uh, provided that we have the funds available, we will perform the root treatments uh, program up to the budget levels. Sure. And then again, this will be part of the annual budget that we will review and obviously set the limits. I believe this so. is a part of our capital program. Capital program. I, yeah, I believe this is a line item in the in in the actual budget. I thought it was. It, it's included in the budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. the budget yeah. funds. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Because okay. I remember we had this debate last time yeah. too. Um, yeah, we actually, plan for this every year. Yep. Actually, and if you don't mind, I'll actually read item B. B is to request the pre-approval to purchase chemical treatment for root control and sanitary sewers from Duke's Root Control for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 for amounts not to exceed the annual budgets for this line item. Uh, Mr. Moore? I have two questions. Uh, the first is, our program on the root treatment, is this like a mapped area, northeast side, southeast side, at, on a year-to-year -year basis, or is it just hit the city as is... It's a combination of factors. It would be areas that are identified as a result of complaints through backup and or item or areas that are identified through our basin-wide televising. Our city, uh, we, we have the city broken up in different sanitary drainage basins. And when we complete that basin televising, if we find an area there that we have root problems on, then we target that area. So it's a combination of, of, of our closed circuit uh, TV inspection in areas and then other areas that are uh, either on a complaint during the course of the, the year preceding the treatment or if we have areas that we know have had root problems in the past and we go back and do a reinspection. Generally speaking, I think <coughs> this is good for uh, five, ten years, something yeah. like that. I'm, for some reason, I'm thinking five for sure. Yeah. So okay. it's, in, for, for instance, if we treated an area in 2009, we'd go back in 14 and take a peek at it to make sure, and if there were roots coming back, then in 15, we'll go back and treat that area as well. Okay. Uh, then the second part of that is, uh, as you know, I mean, there's sewer backups quite often in older districts. Sure. The pipe, you know, so um, the next question is, is that what is the uh, opportunity that we would exceed that budget? I mean, it's 40,000, no, I understand that's the budget number we put out based on the chemical we're using in the sole source. I mean, is this going to accomplish what we want to get done? It is, yes. We do go through and based on some historical averages and uh, okay. information we may have gleaned uh, from CCTV activities, we have a pretty good idea of what the program's gonna look like for the coming year. All right. That's all I had. Thank you. There's a right. little bit of contingency built in. It's not like it's you know, huge, but right. just for to budget for a little bit of unknowns. And if I may, too, I mean, the way that this is worded, it's to not exceed the annual budgeted item. So if we do find that there needs to be a bump to that, I mean, we do that in the budgeting process. So we would say that Correct. we would like right. to increase that to seven. This, that's how I'm interpreting it. Right. If we ever found that 40000 was not accomplishing the goal, then it would be staff's responsibility to request an increase sure. in that budgeted item. 
or something that we could even bring up in stating that we'd like a more aggressive approach <coughs> to soil control. Does it affect the trees at all, or how does that work? Does it just make the roots uh, that are in our pipes? Uh, does it, what, what does it do? It basically dissolves the root. Okay. It affects. It, my understanding is it affects the roots that are in the in pipe, the but it's not doesn't. Doesn't go into the tree, the tree up, go up, okay. yeah, not systemic. Okay, I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Can we get one that can take care of the ash trees? <laughs> <laughs> Chemical that would kill the roots and then treat the ash trees all at yes, once? Genetically set up. Exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, we have just a report. Do we have any further uh, information from staff? No. All right. I make a motion to approve uh, both items A and B. All right, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. Cheerio. Item three, request by Mitchell Hyde, owner of Jekyll and Hyde Bar at 226 South Broadway to place tables and chairs in front of his business in city right of way. Staff? Uh, we received a request in, uh, in mid-July relative to the petitioner wanting to put table and chairs into the right of way uh, outside of the establishment on July 14th. Tom Giese, the real, uh, right of way specialist for the city, sent a correspondence to uh, Mr. Hyde indicating that we will need a scale drawing that has information relative to the property lines, back of curb, elevations at the sidewalk and building corner, the proposed size, shape, and placement of the table and chairs, and documentation that a proposed five, minimum five foot wide ADA accessible uh, pathway would be provided as part of this. Uh, proposal. To date, we have not received any information back from the petitioner, and absent that information, we cannot make a recommendation to allow this to happen because there is no guarantee that there would be an ADA accessible pathway in front of the business. Would you like to receive a place on file on this or to hold? Uh, at this point, because we've not received a response back and there's nothing here, we would actually recommend denial. Mm. All right. But this person could obviously make the request again. They though. could make the request All again. Right. Motion yeah. I'll second that. All right. Well, we have motion uh, and <coughs> uh, for the discussion because again, I just want to make sure this person does have the ability, obviously, to present the information. Absolutely. We open the request. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. This is actually something that I guess is it possible for this individual to get the information to you prior to next week, Tuesday? It's possible, but if that happens and it's staff's determination that it's. That, that the proposal does not meet with the minimum requirements that we would set forth, that we would still have a denial. Right? Fair enough. All right. I just wanted to make sure in case this is something that comes up next Tuesday. Yeah. It's it. Ideally, what we would what we would prefer is to have the information presented so that we could discuss it with the committee mm -hmm. uh, and make a, a reasonably informed decision here before making any kind of sure at the recommendation and with discussion. With the proper format. Yes. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Item four, request by <laughs> owners of the Quinn and Platten buildings for an easement to place dumpsters within the lot F right of way. Staff? Uh, we received a request on August 4th for the placement of these dumpsters. On August 4th, Tom Giese sent the request back uh, to the petitioner indicating that we would need a site plan showing the location of the dumpsters on city owned property along with some additional information before this request can be submitted to the Improvement Service Committee for their recommendation. As of today, we have still not received that information, so a recommendation would be to deny. All right. Motion deny. Second. All right. Very similar to the last one. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item number six, request by Alderman Weary on behalf of Jamie Blahobiak at 1212 Nicolay Avenue for 10 additional on-street overnight parking exemptions for 2015. Staff? Received a uh, communication from Alderman Weary indicating that uh, the petitioner had, would like another 10 exemptions for the year. Uh, they did some construction on their driveway. It was blocked for two months and they used up their exemptions. Uh, don't have the information here with me, but I did also receive a communication from uh, the Blahoviaks. The work they had done, they had a building and trades class from West High or something like that uh, involved with the work on their garage. So mm -hmm. it was work that was done for them, but was benefiting Education West High schools. Sure. And 
the the students uh, who were performing the work had a construction trailer, uh, and they placed the construction trailer in the driveway, blocking access to the driveway and the garage. That work went on for about two months because the students were working two and a half hours a day approximately. Uh, as a result, the property owners used up the available number of occurrences uh, to allow on-street parking in a residential area, and they are now left with the remainder of the year with no exemptions. Um, the only comment that staff would offer in, uh, I should say, the only comments that staff would offer relative to this item is if that was the case, especially because it was of benefit to uh, the school district, uh, we would have appreciated the, the, the property owner reaching out to us before this happened because this would have been something I would have been happy to bring forward in front of the committee as a special exemption request that would not have counted against uh, their number of occurrences. Second item that I would like to bring up is they are petitioning for an additional 10 and I believe our standard is six occurrences, each of which could be two weeks in length, sure, so sure. staff would not support an additional 10. I, I would just, I would uh, modify that, approve it at six, and if they need to do an exemption, they can come forward as another communication for an exemption to sure. add an additional four. Just to get us back, that program through West High School is great. I mean, they work with NeighborWorks, they've remodeled mm -hmm. some homes, and these kids are graduating and staying in a trade, skills, yeah. in a trade that is needed. So. Um, I certainly don't want to step in any of those, those toes or, or get in the way of anything that they want to do, so it'll certainly help these homeowners out. Um, I, I agree, no foresight would have been a little better, but I think six is fair. Plus we're only at, I mean, we have only August, uh, you know, September, October, November, December left, so we I mean, most people get six for the year, so it should Correct. be adequate, hopefully, for the last five months. Plus it is for two week periods, if necessary. Correct. All right, uh, Mr. Nettig? No, I'm okay. Okay. Do we have a, uh, so we have, Actually, a motion with the item six or the for six, yeah, six. Amend, uh, amend it for I'll six. Second, yeah. All right, so we have a motion and a second with the amendment for six additional on-street overnight parking exemptions. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? That motion carries. All right, item seven: request to adopt Department of Public Works mailbox placement and repair policy. Staff. Uh, the department has a policy for mailbox repairs. This typically occurs uh, with snow plowing, street sweeping, or solid waste collection where uh, our vehicles in those activities have a need to get back to the curb <coughs> uh, and sometimes inadvertently mailboxes are struck. The policy that we are currently operating under goes back to the 80s or before. It really was always rendered to a, basically an in institutional knowledge. All we did was put it on paper for perpetuity. Sure. So the policy we had in effect, or that is currently in effect, provides that a basic U, uh, U.S. Postal Service approved mailbox uh, mounted on a four by four wooden post um, would be the replacement. And if a property owner chooses instead to replace their own mailbox, they could submit a receipt and we would reimburse up to $50. Again, no, five, right. Yeah. Again, that policy has been in effect for yeah. uh, 20 years or better, oh, yeah. and <laughs> staff is merely requesting the ability to increase that $50 fee to a $75 replacement value to reflect current cost. All right. Mr. Moore? In a typical year, how often does it happen that we have to replace mailbox? Uh, depending on the year, we... I, I have been around for uh, for winters where we've had significant plow events, you know, where we've had 20 plow events for the year, and it's not at all uncommon on a on a bad snow event if visibility is affected and you know we get six eight inches of heavy wet snow, we could we, we could impact 20 ma mailboxes in a plow event. Okay. So well, we've it, had zero on heavy plow yeah, events too. Sure. So I mean, it, we're probably looking between uh, maybe a, around 100 mailboxes. Yeah, but the worst year in the 10 years I've been uh, leading operations division, to my general recollection, the worst uh, year we had was DPW repaired. That doesn't mean we had to replace everything. Mm -hmm. Sure. The mailbox got knocked off. We went. <coughs> we had to replace a mailbox or whole thing or just the poles. 
uh, 200 is, but but the 100 or less is pretty normal. So pretty significant. Yeah. Well, my consideration on that is Grand View Estates, as as it starts to get developed out there, you know, you're not going to have just house after house after house and rural housing, and you're going to have them, you know, spread out as the development starts. So I, I see the opportunity arises a little bit. But I mean, I I, I like the ordinance. I mean, I think seventy-five dollars is pretty fair, and I think nothing in this ordinance supersedes what the U.S. Um, regulate what the federal regulation is for Melbach. So mm -hmm. I think we're certainly within our rights to do this. Mr. Nettick, do, do we do most of them ourselves, or do, uh, are there a lot of them that are property owners? The vast majority, our carpenter takes care yeah. of. You have the That's occasional, you know, it could be anywhere from zero to maybe five a year where people come in. I have this beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. plastic composite, and I spent $350 on it. Like, it's all fine and good. I appreciate that, but we'll give you, here's the policy letter. If I may, though, I mean, to that, Mr. Nanning, they do have the right to make a claim, though, and I know right. that's happened from time We've to time. We've had that a couple times. Yeah. yeah. So they can, and I believe that claim can even cover labor if necessary. They'll make a full claim for whatever it right, is. Right, through, and it'll be correct. approved or through denied the or whatever. Yes, through the attorney's right. office, correct. Okay. Move to approve as recommended. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion. A second, any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. I like that. It's good to put that to paper so we actually have something. Uh, item number eight, request by the Department of Public Works to approve a service fee of $2 per transaction for credit card payment of parking citations to cover costs charged by the city's service vendor. Staff? Currently, anyone receiving a parking citation has the option to either come in and pay in person at third floor here at City Hall, or they can uh, send in by mail uh, using cash or check. For those who wish to come in and pay in person, we do offer the ability for them to use a credit card using the GovPay system. Uh, GovPay charges uh, $1.50 per transaction. That used to be $3.50, uh, but that charge has been reduced somewhat recently. We now have the ability through the city uh, to accept credit card payment for tickets that are less than 30 days old and we have that on the city's website. So you could actually sit at home, enter in your ticket number, bring that citation up on the screen, pay by credit card, uh, and not ever have to come down to City Hall. It's pretty convenient. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> now with that, our service vendor charges the city 30 cents per transaction plus 2.2% of the citation value. So what we did was went back and took a look that if what would be the ability to break even on our charges. So at a $2 service charge, take the first 30 cents off of that as the, as the flat fee and then back solve at 2.2%. Citations at a dollar value of $77.27 or less, there would actually be a little excess money in that fund. Anything that's above and beyond that citation value, we would actually be operating at a deficit. Um, it's not uncommon at all to wind up with citations in the hundred dollar range mm -hmm. because sometimes it's not uncommon to wind up with multiple citations. I guess is the best way to put that. <coughs> so right now, staff is recommending that we charge a two dollar flat fee, and the hope is that between those citations that are less than $77 and those citations that are greater than $77, that will wash the, itself out. Are other departments doing the same thing or similar? I don't know how other departments are operating. I, I don't know if clerks is, uh, is, still, is using GovPay or if they have something internal, and I'm not sure how Parks Department handles it. Okay. I know inspection does go pay, and okay. there, yeah. there is a fee with that. That's a $3, though, I $3 think. $3 fee. Yeah, because I think the water utility is the same way, too. They motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion, second, any further discussion? All right, we can always revisit this if we need to. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item nine, request to amend and readopt the parking division on-street overnight parking policy. Staff? Uh, originally, I was looking to combine the discussion uh, between items yeah, eight uh, and nine, I'm guessing. six and nine, or six and nine, right. or five and nine. Excuse me. 
But with five being held, uh, what we're going to do is limit discussion on item number nine to a very specific portion of this policy. Currently, the policy allowing exceptions, the, the six occurrences that we were speaking of under item number six, those are limited to in front of single family or two family residential houses. Multi-family homes are not governed by this exception policy. The reason for that is multi-family is treated as commercial property mm -hmm. under zoning ordinance for all use for all items except for use, because obviously residential in nature, and under DPW policies relative to special assessment. So assessments are levied against multi-families consistent with residential zone properties. But when we talk about off-street parking, the need for off-street parking and the number of off-street parking or places that need to be provided on multifamily uh, residential, those are covered and considered to be commercial uh, under zoning code. So multifamily housing needs to have no more than 15 stalls, which are then broken up by an island. Mm -hmm. You know, all the green space requirements need to be met. So as a result of that, we do not feel that the on-street parking exceptions that are granted for residential properties would apply to multi-families, single family and two family residential only. So that's the only part of the ordinance we are looking for concurrence on tonight. I guess staff would recommend that we maintain that policy and we're looking for some, some feedback from the committee on that. Discussion? I don't see a problem with it personally. I mean, <coughs> it's very realistic. Um, uh, I think the, I think this, because we've had a couple of requests on that, haven't we, from a duplex? Uh, we've had some requests from apartment buildings, okay. basically, that we, that we have That's denied because, right. because, because of, of the that. policy. So duplexes are included. Yes. That's what I'm so saying. Yeah. Duplexes. Single family and duplexes don't change. Yep. So it's a big apartment complex. Is we don't want to. Everyone in there. Uh, Brother lives there, and they got their buddies sleeping yep. over. No, nope, no, I think that's <coughs> hard to manage, and you run out of space. I think it's very park. realistic, and that's the role of the apartment complex as well. well so. I think our our policy says that the uh, exceptions that you can get the six exceptions apply per address. So, uh, like even if you had a duplex, still have to address it. it is. I mean, it is. Often duplexes are 242 and 244 or 242A and B. So, so it the is addresses are separate then. Correct. We can definitely differentiate that. So uh, because we are probably going to revisit this, do you want us to still approve the, the, the amendment? To the policy now, knowing we still may be amending it later on. I think it's it was worthwhile for us just to have the discussion. So this is on your mind. I would have no problem with holding this and taking this item up as part of the larger discussion uh, with item number five next month. Well, I think that might <coughs> have a little more invested discussion. So I I would almost prefer that we just adopt this now. And, and that, that's perfectly fine. I know Either way is, is acceptable. Just, just to kind of have that taken care of so we don't have to explain it next time either. Does that make sense? Motion to adopt as explained. All right. you have a second? Yeah, I agree. Does everyone think makes sense with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather take care of that today. Right. Okay. So what we will so do is we will make good. sure that the motion yeah. indicates uh, that it's to approve the request to readopt the parking division on-street overnight parking policy relative to applicability mm -hmm. in front of single family and dual family residential properties only. Yeah, yeah. no, that so makes it's sense. very specific to only this topic. Gotcha. That's what my motion is. All right, fair enough. We have a second by That's Mr. That's what I thought Moore. I heard you yes. say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I heard. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Greener. Item number 11, review and award the following contracts to the low response of bidders for item A, parking ramp repairs 2015, item B, pavements 3 TAC 15. Staff? Uh, item A, parking ramp repairs, we received two bids, uh, Central Restoration LLC and Barrett Construction Services. Central Restoration was the low response of bidder and has been the vendor who's been the successful bidder for the last several years. We're very happy with the work they provided and we recommend approval of the contract. All right. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. 
All in favor for item A? Aye. For aye. <laughs> Any opposed? That motion carries. And pavement 315 is this Marshall, Marshall Avenue. Uh, received three bids Peters Concrete Bent Construction and Mirage Tech Excavating. Uh, Peters is the low responsive fitter and recommend approval. Move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for item B. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item uh, 12, report and award the contract Park Project 2 TAC 15 Amusement Ride Distribution and Control System Replacement to the low responsive bidder. That should make you happy, Mr. President. If, Staff? If you remember Staff last right month, uh, we, last month we had a contract that, uh, pursuant to the authorization invested in the department back in May to award contracts where a timeliness component was involved, uh, we reported one of those out, and it did, the way that we reported it caused some confusion on the council. Floor. I remember that, yeah. So I did have a conversation with uh, with Alderman Sladek after the last council meeting, and what we came up with was this type of a report. So what we're going to do is report out that there was uh, one bidder for the uh, project to re uh, replace the distribution and control system on the rides at Bay Beach. Uh, that was Eland Electric Corporation. The bid was in the amount of $72,200. <coughs> that bid was acceptable to the Parks Department, and as such, that contract has been awarded, and we are simply reporting that out. Motion approved. Any motion? Uh, I, think I think what think we're looking for is to receive in place on file. It's not approved that we awarded. So right. moved. I'll second that. All right, we have motion second, receive in place on file. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 13, request by Wisconsin Public Service Corporation, are they still call that? For a 15 foot wide utility easement across lands owned by the City of Green Bay, tax parcel number 6 tax 7 tax 1, adjacent to Hurlbut Street. Staff? This would be at the northeast corner of North Military Avenue and Hurlbut Street on the piece of property immediately to the west of our existing yard waste mm -hmm. facility. Mm. Uh, we're going to be putting an electrically controlled tub grinder in at the uh -huh. airways facility uh, and they need to be able to bring, uh, bring the electrical service gotcha. in. we need that. So staff <laughs> is recommending award or approval of the, uh, the easement. Motion approved. Second. second. All right, uh, that seems pretty obvious. All right, we have a motion to second for item 13. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> the motion carries. Item four, when do we gain the tub grinder, by the way? Are they in? What's that? Is the tub grinder in? No. The tub grinder, excuse me, is on order. All right. Item 14, approval of the following temporary limited easements, TLE. Humboldt Road, Kanahawe N, Cornelius Drive to Spartan Road, project ID number 4987, TAC 02, TAC 56. For Mark P. Peterson, parcel 4 in the amount of $475, TLE. Kenneth L. and Diane M. Cook in the amount of $200 for parcel 6, TLE. Staff? Uh, for those of you who've been on this committee for a while, <laughs> every time that we're doing a DOT funded or federally funded project, there is a need to acquire either temporary, permanent, limited easement interests or fee easements. These are some temporary limited easements associated with the reconstruction of Humboldt oh, Road, which is going to occur next year. And staff recommends award of TLE compensation. Motion approved. Second. All right. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item 15 application for an underground sprinkler system license by the Sprinkler Company, Inc. I wonder what they do. Staff recommends award. Motion approved. We have a second. For the 12th time. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> aye, aye. aye. Any opposed? And that application has been approved. Item 16, director's report on recent activities of the Department of Public Works. Staff? Okay, we'll have a relatively short report tonight, which ought to make you happy. <laughs> uh, regret to inform the committee that we did accept the resignation of uh -huh. Scott Hermson, who was a civil engineer in our special projects area. Scott has taken a position with one of the area local area consulting engineering firms. So right when we got back up to full staff with engineers, uh, we're down one and we are out for solicitation to hire a new engineer. With that in mind, I am pleased to report that we did execute the consultant services staff augmentation agreement and Justin Lorenz started with the engineering division on Monday, August 3rd. So we lost one, we got one back Sorry, in, we're still down one. <laughs> uh, well, it's a little bit... Half over. Uh, 
<laughs> Justin works in our project development section and Scott left our special project section. So the special project area is, uh, is, is still down and we're trying to get Justin up to speed as quickly as possible over on the project development section. How long was Scott on board? Uh, he started, I believe, in January. Mr. Rizbisky. Do you do exit interviews with these people? Often, oftentimes we do. Uh, I, I believe the exit interview process is administered through the Human Resources Department, oh. and I believe it's a questionnaire that's voluntary. I don't believe it's mandatory. Oh, okay. With that in mind, I did have a conversation with Scott. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he has one child in college and a second one starting college this year, and he did indicate that the uh, financial package that the consultant was offering was significantly above yeah. what the city <coughs> offered. So, yeah. right. with with two kids in college, he said he just couldn't. He, he had to think of the, the couldn't dollars. contribute anymore. So, uh, definitely understandable. I, mean, I can't fault somebody f for that. Oh, nope. thank um, Wanted to inform the committee that we have Parks Project 3-15 out for bid right now. This is a partial rebid of the tot rides. Mm -hmm. well, so what we did was we pulled off the slide relocation. Yep. We pulled off all work associated with the train. And this is simply to get the kiddie pool out and get the new tot rides in. Those bids are due next Tuesday, August 18th. Provided that the funding is agreeable with Parks, if Parks tells us they that the fund uh, the dollar value of the contract is okay and they have the funds in their program to cover it, uh, this would be one of those projects where timeliness aspect would be adversely impacted. The funds are available in the program. The intent would be with concurrence of Parks Department that I'm going to award this next Tuesday and simply report this back out uh, at the September meeting. So. It, when I know of it going into a meeting, I, I would like to make you aware that that is our intent. Cool. Okay. Um, had a conversation with Parking Division late last week. We've been getting a lot of complaints in the Broadway District about abuse of the time-limited parking zones. So this has historically been addressed by Parking Division on a complaint basis. And by that, what I mean is a business owner mm -hmm in that district would call and say, we think somebody is abusing the time limit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we would go over and investigate that on a one, uh, on an individual complaint basis. And what we've been hearing a lot of from folks we've talked to out there is a situation where we go and we talk to somebody who's violated that time limit zone and staff is being subjected to, well, that car has been here longer than I have. Why aren't oh, yeah. you picking on them kind of thing? I drafted a communication to On Broadway Incorporated and the Business Improvement District Board uh, officers late last week, or Monday of this week, and informed them that you know the situation has occurred. I don't like putting my staff in that kind of a subjective arena, especially my field staff who shouldn't have to deal with those kind of uh, issues. And I also identified to them that equitable treatment is something that we strive for uh, in management here at DPW. So we want to make sure that everybody has clear expectations of, of what, we're, what we'd like to see and that we're consistent in our enforcement of those expectations. With that in mind, we are going to start enforcement of the time limit zones consistent with how the signs are posted. For this week, now until Friday, uh, Staff is out there, we're chalking tires, and where we notice violations, we are warning people and advising them that next Monday, uh, I believe that's the 17th, that citations will start being issued for violation of time limits. Since we put that notice out, I received communication back from two of the board members within the BID and one business owner who's, uh, all the BID took my message and forwarded it on to all the member businesses of the BID. Uh, two of the BID officers wrote back to me and one of the business owners within the BID wrote back, all three of which were thanking uh, Parking Division for stepping up <laughs> to start enforcing uh, the time limits. So 
<laughs> there is support for this within the BID. Uh, I think they realize that there's been some abuses and they understand that the time limits were put in place primarily to allow turnover within those stalls for patrons of the business. Mm -hmm. And it may not necessarily be the patrons who are parking there, but more employees, which defeats the, the, the nature of getting people in and out of those stalls to come in and out of the, the businesses. So uh, we are getting some support there. Last item that I wanted to advise you of is just today I was able to uh, put my thoughts together and I sent a communication into the Office of Commissioner, uh, Office of Commissioner of Railroads uh, in Madison. We have several issues relative to rail crossing uh, repairs that are needed that are going unaddressed by the railway. and. With some of them, there, there's a couple of crossings that over the past few years uh, we have identified, we brought forward, had resolutions passed by Common Council that have gone unanswered by the railroad. I have tried working directly with the railroad on them, um, on some of these crossings. It got to a point last year that we sent a communication in October to the OCR's office and OCR is then obligated to schedule a hearing and seek resolution. OCR hasn't re acknowledged the receipt of that, let alone schedule the hearing. So I've got a communication in the OCR to discuss how can we get, what avenues are available to us under law to force compliance with these, uh, these rail crossings that are in need of repair. Another item that we talked about uh, that, I, that I discussed in the communication is on Military Avenue in 2010, when we reconstructed military, we held a hearing here at City Hall and the OCR's office identified that the city of Green Bay was financially responsible in, in total for the reconstruction of the crossing of Military Avenue. We agreed with that finding. We were fine with that. I know we spent over $60,000 on that crossing. Less than five years later, the rubber materials that we purchased out there have failed. We identified that to um, to the Canadian National, they have indicated back to us that they can no longer find or purchase <laughs> those rubber crossing materials and they intended to patch it with asphalt. We have as a policy on arterial streets and above, we have paid for the upcharge in crossing materials to get a high grade crossing. So part of my communication was what recourse is left for us when we paid, voluntarily paid an upcharge for these crossing materials, they failed in less than five years, and the intent by the, the rail company is to put in a lower grade crossing. Last item that I asked for some, some clarification or some guidance from the OCR's office, City of Green Bay has had a long-standing policy that I have concurrence from Canadian National in writing that if a rail crossing is permanently removed from service, the rail company is responsible for removing the rail, ties, ballast materials. The city of Green Bay will then pick up all costs associated with the permanent pavement repair or replacement. Within the past two years, we replaced a angled crossing of Quincy Street at Radisson that was one of the worst in the city. When we petitioned and <coughs> talked to the, the CN about doing that crossing, they identified that they were planning on pulling out the crossing of Bay Beach Road immediately to the east of Quincy. So if you go northbound on Quincy until you come to the T intersection at Bay Beach Road and make the right hand turn to start heading east towards Bay Beach, mm -hmm. there's an asphalt crossing that was recently put in there and the rails were replaced. They dead ended the track. It's my understanding that there's a proposal out there to reinstitute rail service across Bay Beach Road at that crossing after we paid to have that taken care of. The crossing is currently listed with the Federal Rail Administration as a closed crossing, <laughs> but not necessarily an abandoned crossing. So I provided information to the OCR's office with our policy, the concurrence from Canadian National, uh, the fact that we have done this in locations and now what recourse do we have if the rail company decides to try to reinstitute service at that location again? Can, do, does the, the local municipality have the ability to negotiate items such as the type of crossing put in, maintenance responsibility for that crossing and a commitment to maintain it in trafficable condition and recovery of costs for the pavement repair that we voluntarily put in. 
So I'm hoping to get some response back from the OCR. I know rail crossings have been a very hot button item yeah, with a number of people. Media. Uh, <laughs> so I want to make sure that you folks know that we get the, into the minutes uh, for the director's report that we are actively working with the OCR's office down in Madison on this. Uh, this does play into a, into account with the crossing of Elgin at, uh, mm -hmm. at Century. There, I, I did go out and take a look at that crossing. The switch gear that would direct trains off of the uh, off of the main line onto the spur that was that, that had previously been served by that crossing. The switch gear has been removed, has been for some time, and on the east side of Elgin Road, where the tracks used to go tail out. Uh, in an east-west fashion, there's a new building there. So there's no possible way that that rail could be put into service for any use at all, uh, unless that, I believe it to be a warehouse on the, on the west side of Elgin Road, unless that warehouse were removed. So we are, I was going to talk to the CN about simply removing that track, and if they didn't have the ability or the time to do the track removal, I was fine with our forces going out there and pulling that, that rail out of there and then using our pavement repair contract, we're going to repair it just to get that one done. But if a closed crossing is not an abandoned crossing, we are going to change our policy and we are going to insist that if we're contributing the money to this, that the CN or any parent railroad will have to petition Federal Rails, FRA, to abandon, permanently abandon that crossing and they would have to negotiate in good faith to reinstitute a crossing in the future. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're spending money that we could be that out could be in the, two years. Exactly. Right. Wow. All right. <coughs> so are hearing more on the one on Henry Street that we had an agreement with them? That's that's one that I referenced in in the communication that you know we actually sent the communication down to your office and you haven't responded. What's going on? Yeah, that's been going on a year, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was in 2014. Okay. That was, was about to say, I don't see you. All right. Uh, so we there there are several of them. There uh, there there was one on Lombardi Avenue at Ashland uh, that was supposed to be ordered in. That was part of that communication last year. Um, the Henry and Farland, which goes back to 2007, mm -hmm. that was agreed to and never completed. Um, there are three crossings on Morrow between Henry and Elizabeth that are in absolutely horrible shape. One is, I believe all three are owned by CN, but were put in based on requirements of the end user. And one goes to Joe. Well, one goes to Jokey Lumber and two go to Spire Freezers, and I now have a contact for Spire Freezers. I will be reaching out to them uh, to see if we can get their concurrence for permanent abandonment of those crossings, and then I'll work with Jokey Lumber mm -hmm. to see if we can get abandonment of that line, and if we can get the crossings deemed to be abandoned. I am willing to utilize city funds to remove the rail and, sure. and track yeah, uh, just, just to get these things sure. done, because if... CN told me, I talked to their track supervisor, and he told me he's got 937 crossings in his district. So that's Wisconsin, the UP, I don't know if there's a couple of states around it as well. And CN provides him with funding to recondition four crossings a year. Huh, wow. Uh, some of those tracks uh, along Morrow, you know, go extend in onto private property. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know how that, that affects that. But well, like I said, two of those crossings are put in under agreement with Spire Freezers. Now, oftentimes spur lines are owned by the company, the company being served. Okay. In this case, they are not. They are still owned by CN, but they are put in under agreement as needed by Spire. And there's one in there that I believe is down to Jokey Lumber. So we're going to work with those folks who had the original agreement with Fox Valley sure. and Western or the Green Bay and Western or whoever, mm -hmm. the rail company that was acquired by CN. So we'll work with the end users to see if we can get concurrence <coughs> from them stating that the, the crossing is no longer needed and can be abandoned. If we can get that, that gives us the case to then go to the CN to declare an abandoned sure, crossing. And, then we can and once it's abandoned, as long as we get concurrence from that from the rail company, then we we don't have the time and we don't have the funding, we don't have the manpower, whatever, to get these crossings pulled out. If we can hire a contractor of our own or utilize internal forces 
to go out there and physically pull that material up. If they want to send a track supervisor and no equipment and just watch us do it to make sure we do it correctly, you know, I'm not against spending a little bit more money to get these things out just to get these problems taken care of because we're getting claims from residents saying that suspensions are being damaged, tires are being blown, <laughs> rims are being damaged. Yeah. This is not good. We need to be able to provide for our, for our residents and it, although it's an obligation of the rail company, they're not living up to that obligation. So if we need to step in and do something, <coughs> then I'm willing to do that. Okay. All right. Oh, well, we're echoing ourselves a little bit here. So. Yes. All right. Uh, we'll show you Stephen place on file. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Right. Do we have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Well done. Good job. Cheerio. Good. Nice That's a real hodgepodge. More of it. Ugh. All over the place. Yeah. yeah.